from West Wendover in Nevada, we drive only a few yards into Utah and turn south where it's only a couple of miles to the historic airfield. Here we meet Jim Peterson who has been the driving force behind the restoration efforts at the airfield for years. Well, welcome to historic Wendover Airfield. Thank you, this is uh, quite a place. I'm uh, looking at the service club building and I wonder, it feels kind of like we're going back in time a little bit. You know, that's our whole objective with this whole airfield. It's the most original remaining Army Air Force base in the country. We've got like 90 original World War II structures and uh, we're working on restoring them so we can take you through you know, the control tower, the officer's club, barracks. It's, uh, it's really a unique place. Wendover was really founded as a railroad town for the Western Pacific Railroad that came through on its way to California. The base remained as an Air Force base until 1977, and then it was turned over to the city. People can come here and feel like they've kind of walked back into the 1940s. I'm ready, so. let's go back in time. All right. <laughs> We've come into the entryway of the officers club and one of the big areas is this event hall. This is where they would have had a Christmas party, a Thanksgiving party, they would have done a change of command ceremony, a wedding for one of the officers. It was just really a multi-purpose multi hall. Everything you see here, all the roof and the structure and the, the railings along the side, that's all original. We tried to keep it much the same that it was. And they would have had bands in here, you know, doing, doing the 40s music, USO singers. So they would have had those kind of events here. You can almost feel the veterans walking around here. I'm hearing Glenn Miller in my head <laughs> as, I, as I look across the floor. Being in this hall is like a time machine. It's so well restored that I can easily imagine that it's the 1940s again and we're arriving for a dance. Next, Jim brings us back to reality with a sobering display. We didn't ever have any nuclear material in Wendover, but they built 150 prototype atomic weapons here for testing purposes. We took this bomb to a reunion of the 509th Composite Group in 2005 in Wichita, and these are all original signatures of the flight crew. So this signature right there of Paul Tibbetts. I recognize that the name. Commander, that's his original signature. He was the pilot of the Enola Gay. He was the pilot of the Enola Gay, right. The Enola Gay that flew that mission was here at Wendover for a period of time. The project that this was a part of was called Project Alberta. Project Alberta was a subset of the Manhattan Project to turn the scientific element of the bomb into a deliverable weapon. Each bomb had four radars, uh, those holes are six barometric sensor systems. The wires pulled out, there were four clock mechanisms, electrical safeties, and all of that had to be tested to, to work together and work properly. So that's really what they did at Wendover. They weren't working on the nuclear fission part, they were working on all the mechanical and electronic components of the bomb. Now we're coming into the, the mess hall area and, uh, and of course the bar area. They were typically flying missions 24 hours a day. And so there's a full kitchen back in the back there. When the crew was done, the officers could come into here and get a hamburger, get a meal. They probably would have gotten a drink first. <laughs> I can understand that. You gotta have your priorities, right? Yeah. <laughs> As Jim takes us along the length of the base, it's apparent that a lot of these buildings could use restoration. 
Jim has been fundraising over many years and the work is being done in phases as the funds come in. If you want to contribute to the restoration, you can at the airfield website. Why did they pick Wendover to build a base? Well, Wendover is on what used to be Lake Bonneville, uh, which was a huge, huge flat area. From, from here to Salt Lake, it's almost flat. It was easy to go out on this old playa bed and build targets. And then, of course, the planes had a lot of room to maneuver, and it was not near a populated area. Wendover was what they called phase two. During the first part of the training, a pilot might be trained in Denver and a radio operator in California and somebody else in Kansas. Wendover is where they all came together and we formed up as a bomb group. And I'd find out that you were my pilot, you were my radio operator, I was the co-pilot. This is where we developed the team and then we practiced as a team. And then from here, 19 of the 21 bomb groups would fly east to the European theater and they, and they fought in Italy, Germany, and the European theater. So the vast majority of the people who were here who went off to fight went to Europe rather than exactly. Asia. This hangar is in the process of restoration now, thanks to Jim's efforts. When you learn its history, you might agree that it deserves the effort. So this is the hangar that was built specifically for the atomic mission project. There were not any hangars on the base big enough for a B-29. This floor is, is just under an acre. It's, it's about 40,000 square feet. So when a B-29 is in here, the wingspan is 141 feet. There's only 20 feet from wingtip to the edge of the building. You gotta be good uh, at parking to get in here. <laughs> Another interesting thing about this hangar the bottom of the windows are seven feet high. When they were modifying the B-29s in here for the Atomic Mission Project, they wanted the light, but they didn't want anybody seeing what was going on. That makes sense, right? If you want to have the light, but you don't want people to see you, so you put your windows up. So no basketball players were allowed near the hangar. <laughs> <laughs> and is this all original? It yeah, seems to be in yeah. pretty good condition. This is 70-year-old concrete, and it looks better than my 10-year-old <laughs> yeah, driveway. Right. <laughs> We're walking on the same floor that the Enola Gay rolled on. Yes. That's kind of mind-blowing. <laughs> yeah, this is where that all happened. Wow. Jim has left us with a deep appreciation for the work he has done at the airfield, and we leave with a respect for the history that we learned today.